Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 20. It's an infused e-glass and soric laminate with vinyl ester resin. It's a pretty basic thing. 18 ounce e-glass on either side of 2 millimeter soric. Uh, most of the resin is in the soric. Um, it's not the lightest core, but it's quick and easy to manufacture and it works as the flow media for the infusion. I'm laying this up on a G10 sheet with some chemical release and surface is not beautiful but it should be okay I just want to be able to show some shrinkage in the resin so there's gonna be no gel coat this is the triaxial material and used to lay it up with the plus or minus 45 on one side and what we'll call zero uni stitch to the other I'm gonna put it with the plus or minus 45 side down those fiber bundles are a little smaller here's the soric in the middle and I'll put down the other sheet of glass to make a symmetrical laminate about that core. I'm not using any spray glue here. I'll come back and use a little to hold the peel ply down. And in general, if you can avoid using spray glue, it's great. But a little bit is not a problem. And it's very handy if you've got any type of shape in your tool just to hold the material in place. So I've got that peel ply down and notice my spray glue is spraying chunks instead of a nice mist and so I'm gonna clear the nozzle here very being very careful not to squirt myself in the face with the adhesive this should return it to a nice even spray pattern because big clumps of spray glue are never a good thing to have around fold back the peel ply so there's not a lot of extra peel ply around the perimeter and I could have cut it off, I just folded it back because I was being lazy. And I'm going to tuck in the feed side underneath the peel ply, lapping onto the glass and butting up to the edge of the soric. So the resin will be able to flow out of that feed line and right into the soric, uh, which will serve as the flow media. And I'll just tuck the peel ply over the top to protect the bag from those um, gaps of the spiral wrap, which can cause bag trouble. So I'm going to clean off. Uh, bits of excess glass around the edge in case there are any little pieces of fiber that would be under the sealant tape because those would cause very small leaks that are hard to find wouldn't show up until you've shot the infusion and then you come back an hour later and find there's air in your part I'm going to put the bag on here as I have done in many of these other samples so I'll kind of rush through this but one thing here that I'm noticing is it because of the release agent on that table I didn't mask it off for where the bag perimeter would be so I'm gonna come back with a little bit of mold cleaner fold all my materials back and um, with my one glove I'm going to just wipe off that perimeter to get the release off that surface and hopefully now the sealant tape from the bag will stick the MTI hose on the vacuum side is just wrapped in a little peel ply mostly to keep it where I want it and now this is much better it holds down when I stick it doesn't come popping back up but I found I've made another mistake in putting my resin feed line it's too long and I've got that big tape joint where I've taped the spiral wrap over the feed line just to keep it from sliding out and but that's going to be where the tacky tape would be so what I'm going to do is peel everything back and slide that further in which when it comes time to do the infusion we'll see causes another problem but I think it's going to be okay I'm not giving myself much room around the perimeter on this uh, just because I had already made the bag and ended up making it too small so I'm kind of cheating already and uh, ideally you'd give your bag more room around the edge and wouldn't be crowding yourself so much but I'm going to place all these pleats remembering to keep the pleats very symmetrical and to put the tubes 
up in a pleat. I prefer to put tubes through pleats in the vacuum bag rather than holes in the bag. If you can avoid a hole in the bag, it's always good. And in this case, because it's such a simple shape, it's very easy to just shoot those hoses through, um, leaving a big enough pleat underneath so that there's some flexibility and they're not going to pop up and have air coming in under the hoses. So I'm fitting the vacuum with a clamp on the resin side so when I pull the bag down, air won't come shooting in. Here's the vacuum. I'm going to go around and check the perimeter, pull any wrinkles out from the peel ply, the bag on that surface there. Now I'm going to mix the resin. This is a Stipolipovia vinyl ester infusion resin and it's being catalyzed with MEK 925 at about 1.75 percent. This table surface is pretty warm and so I'm I'm counting on that to I'm not catalyzing it. Normally it'd be maybe 2% um, depending on the temperature and how much resin I'm mixing. But the resin itself is relatively cool in the pot. It's probably um, you know, room temperature, which in this was about 65 Fahrenheit. And I'm using this little infusion clamp and I'm going to cut a little bevel on the end of the hose, a 45 degree, which helps keep it from butting into the bottom of the cup. And this little guy, you can slide the hose through. It just holds it in there. Uh, this is one I made up. Other people make them. Um, I put the model on GrabCAD if anyone wants it. Here's the resin mixed. It's very thin, and I let it sit for a minute or two to kind of self-degas. A lot of the air came out of it. And now I'm cracking open the infusion. I'm going to let the air... the the air out and the resin in. And I'm shooting this one with fairly modest vacuum to show you can do it. Um, ideally with an infusion you'd shoot it with as much vacuum as you can get but in this case it's about 24 inches of mercury 200 millibar and I'm not going to reduce it when I clamp off. So this is just one vacuum level will still fill uh, everything will still be pretty well um, compacted and already we can see here one issue I'm having because of that tape that I wrapped around and because I had to slide that feed line in I'm getting resin only feeding from one side and it's kind of choked off on the, the side closest to me here um, and that's a kind of a silly mistake you'd want to avoid that with something bigger this should be fine because there's enough flow in the Soric and um, this is such a thin resin it will just fill anyway but this a you know having it off like that is uh, it's just it's just sloppy and um, for something bigger you'd want to avoid that again giving myself more room around the perimeter of the bag I could have solved that problem but again biggest problem with vacuum bagging is making the bag too small I found so I've got some other videos on vacuum bag making if you want to check them out I will uh, put a link in the description so we're filling up here. It has only been probably eight to ten minutes. Having the table surface warm makes things flow very quickly and the Soric is a beautiful flow media itself. And I've got that bit of just the two plies of glass uh, together at the end and a quite a wide vacuum break before it gets to the MTI hose. So I'll come in here um, and clamp it off push the feed line back away from the Soric in hopes that any air in there stays stuck in the, the feed line instead of and this is the vacuum vacuum pump uh, it's just a little guy and I'm gonna leave it the same same vacuum not gonna adjust it here's the gelled resin you can see it actually gelled this is about half an hour after it was mixed and as it shrinks you can see that what looks like air in that feed line but the laminate itself looks nice and tight there's no air uh, no leaks and in between the cells and the soric you can see it's um, very tight and again they're looking at the lines from this perspective you can see how uneven the fill was so next day come back I'm gonna demold this pops off very easily and the surface looks really nice 
you can see some shrinkage in the surface like that little bit in the light there it's where some of the toes were broken up and there's more resin on the surface than there is fiber this is why you use a print blocker for really nice surfaces because it tends to print through and you can see just that surface the edge of the soric the nice thing about soric is that you don't have to put a taper in it you just it kind of makes its own taper because it's so thin overall a little more than three millimeters thick and weight wise for one square foot 11 and a half ounces and 327 grams per square foot there's a nice panel pretty handy for a bunch of different stuff the glass skins were probably a little heavier than you'd need for something on with with this core but quite stiff not the lightest thing ever and um, there are plenty of variations on this theme that could be used for a lot of things either for curved parts of a, a part that otherwise has foam core uh, where the soric is quicker and cheaper to fit or um, as the flat part of something that has curvy single skin it would need to use a print blocker and gel coat to get a nice finish but overall it's a good example of a, a pretty handy type of um, laminate that is useful in a lot of sort of lowish volume production situations thanks for checking it out see you on the next one